Hi everyone, my name is Nikila Anderson. I am the Director of Evangelization at St. Bernard's, so I am Letty's neighbor. And, um, and I'm so excited today to talk to you about anger. I definitely have a strong temper. Um, I am Irish and Catholic and um, so that's where the Irish comes out is my temper. I've been married for four years. I'm one of four siblings. So we fought a lot growing up. I have three brothers and I'm the only girl. They're tall, like they're big guys and, and, and they're a little scared of me. I'm just saying. But anger is, it's good because it helps you see what's wrong in the world, what's wrong in your life. Um, and because you know something's wrong, you're able to discuss it. You're able to fix what's wrong because we're called not to be uh, mediocre in our life. We call for greatness. And part of that greatness is we have to work out the kinks. We have to work out the things that make us angry because we're all sinful. We're all broken. Uh, no one's perfect. Only Jesus and Mary are perfect. Anger is one of those things that I, I feel that the Holy Spirit helps me to discern um, if something's good or not. If it makes me angry, it's usually not a good thing. Um, and my anger, how my temper comes out. Sometimes it comes out as yelling. Sometimes it comes out as oh, I'm just done with you and I'm, I'm out of here. Um, sometimes it comes out of like, I can't stop laughing. It's like the weirdest response. It also has harmed me in relationships because I get very feisty um, and I don't really love and care for the other person. It's, I've focused much more on my anger over anything else. It's like, I'm angry with you. Um, so with my friendships, like that has caused me to lose friends. It has caused me some problems at home and, and at work uh, where I would just get really angry about something. And then I, I would hurt people's feelings that I didn't mean to. Um, I was just expressing how I felt about something very passionately. And so I do have to like constantly rebuild friendships and relationships and apologize. Uh, the words that I, that helped me the most with anger is I'm sorry. Um, because with anger, it's kind of like I get prideful. And my pride gets in the way of things. And I think I'm totally justified in being angry. And, and a lot of the times I'm not. So another thing of anger, I make very rash decisions. I always say, oh, it's the Holy Spirit. But uh, no, not always. Definitely not. When I get angry, um, I make some pretty rash decisions. That's when I'm sorry comes into play a lot. Just say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But really authentically apologize to people because you didn't mean to hurt them. Like I Yes, I have a temper, but I also love Jesus and I love people. And just because I have a temper doesn't make me a bad person. Like I am a good person at the core of um, who I am. Of course, it's how I choose to let my anger affect others. Um, so Satan definitely traps us in my, traps me in my emotions. Um, so like if something really bothers me, I get angry. Like I see injustice in the world and I get so angry and I, I get so upset. And um, like, I, and I just don't know how to process it constantly. I have to like seek the good actively over letting the negatives um, come into my life. And that's all I listen to because there's a lot of good going on in the world, even though it feels like it's the apocalypse, really there, people are good. One of the passages that oh, stood out to me at a young age, and I always remembered it was Jesus flipping the tables at temple. Like that is just like the first scripture passage. I really remember like visualizing and seeing and like that Jesus spoke to me because I had a temper, I had an anger problem. But that was always one that I just always remembered, like Jesus flipping tables. And my brothers would remember this too. So that should tell you, we all have temper problems in our family. And we would talk about that. We'd be like, oh, Jesus flipped the table. So like, you know, anger, there's righteous anger. So, um, so there is a difference between righteous anger and anger that causes you to sin. So it's okay to be angry. Jesus was angry. They were, he was, they were just creating the temple, which is where God lived. I was the holiest of holies um, on earth and they were just creating it. They turned it into a marketplace. And so it's so important. And so what that righteous anger did is that directed his action. He wasn't sinful. It's not like, oh, Jesus lost his temper. He's not without sin. Absolutely not. You're, you can be angry and do things and that doesn't make it sinful. It's what's in your heart. It's he's angry for the sake of like, they're destroying something good. They're desecrating something sacred versus these people are bothering me. So I'm going to flip tables and like ruin their lives. Like that's not what he's doing. And so it's really important to remember what, where does our anger directing us towards? Have I had an experience where I was so angry it became wrath? Yes. 
very constantly in my life, I became very angry with God. Um, and it's really easy for me for my anger to turn into wrath. Um, well, even, even with friends, like it's not just like, so there's crosses in my life and, and that's like kind of been a work in progress where my first reaction is anger towards God. You're allowed to be angry with God like that. You're not supposed, it's not supposed to be all happy, go lucky. It, you're allowed, he's a person, he loves you. You're allowed to be angry with him. Um, but you have to work on that relationship. It's, you know, God, why am I so mad at you? And, um, like you have to kind of wrestle with that. Like, well, why are you angry? Um, and really kind of like come to a place where to resolve that anger with him, because it's a relationship. It's not a, he's like the Lord over you and you're the servant you have to obey. He's a loving father and he wants a good relationship with you. That, that was something I, I learned kind of the hard ways. I didn't think I could be angry with God, but I'm, you're very much allowed to be angry with God. And once I learned that, that transformed how often I was angry when I get in the wrath mode, it's, it's not pretty. It's like, um, Oh gosh, like it's like one of those like you know action movies where like the apocalypse comes. Like that's my version of wrath. Like it is like total like destruction. It's not pretty. So I always have to very much actively avoid going into wrath mode. Honestly, most of the time I just write it out, and then afterwards I see the destruction around me and I go, "What the heck?" That's most of the time, and sometimes um, and then I have to kind of walk it back and like really apologize to people I've hurt. Um, especially my brothers, like, because your family is, they're the closest to you. So they're the easy, they're the ones that don't always get the best of you. What helps me, and I have to think about what the other person is doing. People are good. And I have to remind myself that, like, my brother isn't annoying me. I'm making these decisions about his life because he wants to get me, like, he's trying to do what's best for him. You have to just honor that. You have to search for the good in other people. Like, even when you feel like you're totally justified, even online on social media, I see people's wrath come out a lot. If you are like one of those keyboard warriors that you just kind of type whatever you feel, don't like you stop, think, and then post. If this isn't helping someone come to know and love Jesus more, don't post. Really, really think before you write. You have to think like 10 times more before you write than before you speak. Because speaking, people can kind of like, forgive you for that a little easier because you really um like you don't always think things through the best when you're having a conversation but when you're typing you can't walk back those words those words are in print even if you delete the comment people will remember how that comment made them feel and how you as the commenter made them feel we're called to love everyone that's what jesus said last week in the gospel you have to love your god with all your heart all your soul all your might all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself if you wouldn't say that to yourself, don't say it to your neighbor. Like the world isn't out to get you. The world is just happening and you are a participant in it. And like people are struggling right now. Like people don't really know what's going on. And so they're lashing out. And so they're not lashing out at you. They're lashing out at things beyond your control. So thinking about where people are coming from, that's going to help you exponentially when dealing with people. Because you don't want to be known as someone that has the wrath of God. Um, because that, you know, even if you worked really hard on your anger, that still will stay with you um, for a very long time. And you don't want that in your life. So habits to express uh, ways that we are angry and use our anger for good. Don't yell. That has been, um, when I get angry with my husband, I want to yell because that's what I knew. And that's what I know. And that's what I did growing up. When I was angry with someone, I would yell. And that does not work with my husband. He's like, why are you yelling at me? And then that would make me angrier. And it was the cycle because when I start yelling, it triggers something and then it, I escalate myself. But if you're able to not yell, or if you're so angry, you can't talk, like you don't need to process that with someone else right now. You say, I need a break. I need to go for a walk. And then you're able to do another activity that gets out your, like that extra energy that you're feeling. And you're able to kind of de-escalate yourself and have a rational conversation. And you have to get to the root of what's wrong. You can't let whatever that event was that triggered your anger be what really is wrong because there's really more that's wrong that's causing you to be angry. Your anger just is the tip of the iceberg, but really at the heart of it, um, you've been trying to push down whatever is bothering you. You just have to really kind of think things through. So that's a habit you have to learn is think like, and journal like, Go for a walk, like do something that makes you happy, do something that calms you down. And then you're able to like go back and engage in that rational conversation because we're called to work through our anger. We're called to work through our problems with people. You can't just sit and let it fester. 
So another way to help with anger and to get anger out is to tell people they hurt your feelings. So sometimes for me, anger is my protective shell. That's uh, the way I keep um, my feelings and people like at a distance. So that way, if I get angry, like I can just like lash out at them and then they can stay in that safe space that I've created, which is not, we're not called to that. We're called to community and communion with one another. People are clueless with their feelings and what they say, and they don't realize they're hurting your feelings. So you have to say, and, and be vulnerable and say, you're hurting my feelings when you say it like that. And the reason why we don't want to be vulnerable and say that is because we're worried that they're not going to care. When you say that hurt my feelings and you just leave it at that, like don't lash out. You just say, you know, you know, so-and-so this, that really hurt my feelings. Like they're going to stop and they're going to be mortified. 99%, actually like hundred percent of the time, they will be absolutely mortified that they hurt your feelings. Always try and, and nip your anger off in the bud. So it doesn't become wrath. If it makes you angry, it's probably because it hurt your feelings. So my trigger for anger is when someone hurts my feelings and my automatic reaction is anger. People love you and they want to have a good relationship with you.